Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden Home Safari. Today we are featuring a very special set of animals. Uh, the armadillo that you see right here is Lil, and actually inside that nest box is her baby, Teeny. Now I know you guys have probably met and seen the home safari that we had a couple months ago. Here comes Teeny. Um, that was about our other three-banded armadillo baby, who we ended up naming Quesadillo, but this is Teeny, who's about one month younger than Quesadillo. We just had our first veterinarian appointment with him, made sure that everything looked good and that he was healthy, and we found out that he was a boy, and he's actually a little bit bigger at this age than his big sister, Polina, was. We're very excited to bring him to you today and uh, to tell you a little bit about our three banded armadillos. Now these guys are going to do a little bit of exploring and sniffing around and probably digging in those cardboard chips. So everyone at home, I want you to do a good job observing the behavior of these armadillos uh, because that may help you with our activity that we do a little bit later. Three banded armadillos are unique in the armadillo family and that they are the only ones that can truly curl up into a ball. And you can see with Lil, she looks kind of ball shaped and she looks like she could very easily curl up into a nice tight little ball. And indeed these guys do that to avoid predators. Um, they don't have too many natural predators in South America where they are found, but they have that really great uh, scoot armor that helps protect them from anything that might be trying to bother them. Armadillos love to dig, and their other favorite activity is eating bugs. Hopefully everyone out there loves to eat bugs as much as armadillos. I know I do. So uh, Kaylee, or Callie, I'm sorry, not sure, uh, would like to know what their favorite food is, Erin. That's a great question, and actually I have their dinner here. So I can actually put this right down here and see if Lil wants to come take a look. We've got a little bit of cooked sweet potato, some banana, some crickets, some worms, and all of those little brown dots in the bottom of her uh, food bowl is what we call insectivore diet. We buy a special form of diet that's just made for animals who eat insects. These guys are known as insectivores. And just like you can go to the store and buy dog food or cat food, zoos and other places that take care of animals can go to companies and buy things like insectivore diet or flamingo food or even food for certain kinds of primates. I think as we watch, you guys can, can let us know what you think Lil's favorite food is, but it looked like she went for some of that banana first and then some bugs. And right now, Teeny, the baby, is probably mostly a fan of his mom's milk. He's probably going to start eating food in a little while, but I don't know if he's quite old enough to enjoy bugs the way his mom does yet. Uh, Maya would like to know if that is hair she is seeing under the shell. That is a great question, Maya. Yes. So like all mammals, armadillos have hair, although they don't have a lot of it, like uh, like humans or bears or dogs or cats. These guys have a little bit of hair and most of it is on their soft underbelly. So their scoots, their shell that's on their back does not have any hair on it. Um, their skin underneath does though. And that can help not only um, keep their heat in or their cool in um, to help them regulate that body temperature, but it also sort of serves as whiskers on a cat so they can kind of feel their way around. Their eyesight is not too good. I think our camera is getting a great view of Lil's ears right now, and you can see she has big, giant ears, and her nose is very long and pointy, and her eyes are teeny tiny. So most of the way that our armadillos find their way around the world is by sound and smell. Kathy would like to know how old they are when they're full grown. Sure, so armadillo babies grow up incredibly fast. In fact, when Teeny here was first born, he was probably about the size of a ping pong ball, and now he's almost the same size as his mom. 
These guys grow up incredibly fast, unlike us, and they can be almost full grown within the first year of their life. In fact, I expect Teeny to keep on getting big and maybe even get bigger than his mom here. Teeny's dad, his name is Titan, and he also lives here at the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, he goes out to do programs and uh, go to classes and things like that. And so he's a little bit bigger than Lil here, so I think TD might take after his dad. So uh, Aiden wanted to know how many babies they have at one time. Someone else I just saw uh, ticking through wanted to know if they always have quadruplets. Sure. So, so you talk about different babies. Yeah, armadillos actually have really fun sort of birth patterns. Um, I'm going to tip up. The top of our nest box here so we can check in and see what Teeny's up to. So this kind of armadillo, the three-banded armadillo, only has one baby at a time. There are other kinds of armadillos that have twins or even quadruplets at the same time. Um, the quadruplet having variety of armadillo is the nine-banded. Um, and then screaming hairy armadillo, which is another kind we have here at the zoo, actually tend to have twins every time. It looks like Teeny is doing a very good job of being a very tight little ball for us. Oh, and he's starting to explore a little and check out on his mom. We're so excited to have him here and to, to keep an eye on him as he grows up and starts to explore his space. Uh, these guys tend to stay in their nest box for most of the first two months. And Teeny here is just about two months old. He'll be two months old tomorrow. Um, and we're really excited to, to have him here as he grows up and becomes a grown-up ambassador animal just like his mom and dad. Michaela is wondering if they are in danger. That is a great question, Michaela. These guys are classified as near threatened, which means they're not quite endangered yet. Um, just like most animals that live in the South American rainforest, where these guys can be found, uh, they are vulnerable to things like deforestation. Sometimes these guys get taken for the pet trade as well. Uh, they do not make very good pets, unfortunately. Um, and there aren't a ton of natural predators, but uh, these guys are just as vulnerable to their habitat degradation as most of the other animals that are out in the wild today. So they're not totally endangered yet, but they are sort of on their way. Katie is wondering, how do you know they like you? Or how do you know they're, I guess, comfortable? Sure. So that's a great question, Katie. That's something we actually work really hard at in the ambassador animal department. Um, it's, it's a lot harder to find an animal, a way that an animal likes you than it is to find a way that they don't like you. Because usually when they don't like you, it's very obvious. Things that I take as a good sign right now is that Lil is coming in and out of her nest box. She feels comfortable enough to be eating her food and she's checking on her baby without seeming too frantic. She's definitely letting the baby kind of explore a little bit um, while she still enjoys her diet. Most of the time with these guys, we just look to make sure that they feel comfortable. So when an animal, when an armadillo is uncomfortable, it rolls up into a tight little ball. And since neither of them are in a totally tight ball the entire time here, I'm interpreting that as them being pretty comfortable with our little setup here. Erin, there's been several questions. Have you gone over how big uh, Teeny was when he was born? Uh, a little bit, but it's hard to explain. Uh, Teeny was probably the size of a ping pong ball. So much, much, much smaller than, uh, than this large toddler sized animal that you see before you. Um, and he's still gonna continue to get bigger. But yeah, when he was first born, we were very careful to be extremely quiet and to give him and his mom lots of privacy and space. So we only got a couple little peeks at him for the first couple weeks of his life. And at that point, he was probably the size of a ping pong ball, and he has grown incredibly fast since then. Charlie's curious, how long do they live? 
Yeah, actually, one of the things I'm proudest of here at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden is that we take such good care of our armadillos, we've actually had a couple break records for longevity. Um, we take care of uh, one of the oldest animals in the entire uh, population of three-banded armadillos. Her name is Bachi, and she is 26 years old. 26 years old. Um, however, in, in the wild, when they're not being taken care of by people, um, they tend to live into their mid to late teen years. Um, Lil here was born in 2009, so that would make her 11 right around now. And uh, like I said before, Teeny is just about two months old. Maya is wondering, do they like the rain or like just getting wet in general? Yeah, um, well for starters, these guys, like most mammals, can swim. They don't really find themselves in rivers too, too often. Um, but uh, they, they definitely live in grasslands and the rainforest, so they do find themselves in rain quite a bit. Uh, as for rain out here in Cincinnati, which we've had plenty of in the last week, um, these guys live indoors, so they don't really get too exposed to it. Although in the past, I have given them uh, pools to play in and they, they seem to like it. I don't know what Teeny's gonna think about pools yet, but I know that Lil and Teeny's dad, Titan, both really like kind of splashing around in a pool, just like a lot of us do. Violet, um, this is something we've talked about a lot lately. Violet would like to know if you can describe what their different body parts feel like, like the shell, the ears. Yeah. So let's start with the shell, because that takes up so much of their body. Uh, Lil's shell is very hard and it feels kind of like a basketball. Now, if anyone has a basketball at home, you guys can feel that. Um, it's a little bit harder than that, but that, that's about what they feel like. And I should also point out that Teeny's shell is a lot lighter than his mom's. Um, it's probably a little bit softer as well, and that's going to harden as he ages. Um, so right now, Teeny's probably a little bit squishier than his mama, but, uh, but once he is a full-grown adult, it'll be a very hard shell. Their ears and their skin is actually very soft, and their hair is really coarse and almost feels like whiskers or maybe like a, like a horse tail. Um, it's very thick that way. Okay, I just have a couple more questions here. Um, Christopher would like to know if they can roll up into a ball even at birth. Yeah, so actually the first Two times that we got a good look at Teeny, he was curled up into a tight little ball, which is good, and that is exactly what we were hoping he would do. Um, so they can do that pretty much right away. Uh, different animals are born with different instincts, and thankfully for three-banded armadillos, that curling up into a tight little ball is an instinct that they're born with. So they know how to do that pretty much right away. And then there have been several questions about where can folks find them when the zoo reopens and they are able to come back to the zoo. So let me start by saying we are so excited when, uh, whenever we get to open up, we miss you guys terribly and we're so excited when we'll finally be able to bring back our visitors and have them come visit our animals at the zoo. These guys are located in the Animal Ambassador Center, which is kind of central in the zoo. It's right near the children's zoo. And we have several windows that you can watch some of our animal ambassador animals go through their uh, daily routine with their keepers. Uh, also living in this building, we have Lucille the Binturong, Isla the Tamandua, the Bat-Eared Foxes, and Rico the Porcupine. So yeah, so um, as you guys continue watching uh, these armadillos for another little bit, uh, you guys can check out the website to learn a little bit more about our armadillos and also see what activity we have planned for you today. This is also not the first armadillo uh, activity we've had, so you guys can go back and look at the other ones that we've done before if you wanted to mix it up or try to do all the armadillo activities at the same time.
And that might wrap it up for us. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us for another home safari. We really appreciate you coming and supporting us. And we will catch you again at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Thanks, guys.